friends, welcome to Dinesh Miglani Tutorials. Welcome to another session of cluster vocabulary. We are been doing this. Uh, we have been doing this uh, cluster-based vocabulary since last three four sessions. This is the continuation of the session, and we are doing different type of words with the help of picture, uh, which is very easy to remember. And this is another session of the same continuation with a different type of cluster. In this cluster, we are going to discuss words related to state of being. State of being means uh, a stage or a condition in which you are. That is state of being. These are the following words which we are going to discuss in this session. Let us take them one by one. First one, ever nation. Ever nation. Now, as in the picture, you can see a two-headed snake. It is not very. Uh, uh, common to find such kind of thing, something which is very odd, something which is not expected and something which you might feel weird also. Such kind of a thing is aberration, a departure from what is normal, something which is not normal, uh, unusual or unexpected and things which are unwelcome. Okay. Uh, let us see the synonym for it, anomaly. Anomaly is or, or abnormal. Anything which is odd or abnormal is anomaly. Next, deviation. Deviation is a variation. You see, there is diversity, deviation, deviation. It is diversity or variation. What is deviation? It is diversity or variation. Freak. This can be freak also. You might find these things as bizarre also. Bizarre. Extremely odd, totally uncommon. Such things can be considered to be freak also. Such things are weird also. Antonym, normality, regularity, conformity. Conformity is something which is standard. Something which is standard. Okay? These are antonyms for it. What is the uh, example? Let us see. I have never seen a stranger abrasion than a two headed snake. Of course, it is an uh, abrasion. Next, abeyance. Abeyance is a state of dis uh, dismiss, uh, or it is a, a state where someone or something has, is not in use for a time duration or suspended you can say. A state of temporary disuse or suspension. Uh, let us see the synonyms. Remission. Remission means to cancel out something. Remission is cancellation. Unfinished. Undetermined. Antonyms are activity or something which is active, which is usable. No? Revival. Revival is restored. Something which is inactive, you restore it, it is revival. Action. Until after the murder trial, the inheritance will be placed in abeyance. So the inheritance will be suspended. No? Next, abject. Abject is generally a term used for a person who has no pride, without any uh, is ego or who has no uh, pride in it, no, in the person. Such persons are submissive. Submissive means ready to submit or ready to obey, no. Such persons who are uh, submissive, submissive means they don't have pride. Anyone say anything, they'll, yes, I'll do for you. I'll do it for you. I'll obey you. I'll lick your boots. Boot licker. We did this word in an earlier session. Submissive. Next is fawning. Fawning is flattering. Buttering, you can say. Flattering. A person who flatters others to impress or uh, uh, to take out his own uh, use. Flattering, buttering, these kind of things. Obsequious. Obsequious <coughs> is lavish. So, these things, persons without uh, pride, they are two very important words for such person. Uh, consider it synonym. They are docile and sycophant. 
docile and psychophant are synonym to abject. These are persons who are also considered boot lickers. Who will do anything for the profit, they'll uh, lick others' boots also for their profit. Such persons are docile and psychophant. Next, bedlam. Bedlam is a situation where no one knows what is happening. A situation where people are confused. A situation where uproar is there. Uproar means confusion or uh, you, uh, anything is not clear at all. Such things are bedlam. Unrest, confusion or riot. Riots uh, are also the uh, state of confusion. No? Opposite, calm, quiet and peace. What will be, we can also use pacify here with peace. Calm means pacify also, no? Remember this word. I can't even picture the bed lamp making this public good cause. It would cause a great confusion if it is made public. Next, how is this word indifferent used? Indifferent means a person who is not affected by any kind of situation or anything. A uh, thing, a person who is very frost, who feels nothing and is such type of person is called an indifferent person or an aloof person. So such people are bored also, no? they lack enthusiasm in them. So such people they are indifferent, aloof, blaze. I hope this word indifferent is also clear to you. Let us see the antonyms. Interested, amazed and knife. It is actually knife. We will discuss this word later. Don't use it here. Just remove it. Let us see example. After going on eight cruise, I am blaze about the whole cruising experience. Of course, I am bored about it. I, I lack enthusiasm for, I don't want to go to this now. Next, Kello. It's a good example there. You see, if you have uh, seen this movie of uh, Ruthie Roshan, it is Koi Milgia. In this, he is an uh, immature and uh, a person, he is big enough, but he is immature. And he, such kind of action is an immature action. Kello, a young person, inexperienced or immature. That is Kello. Such people can be considered innocent, adolescent, and unworldly. So what will be opposite of it? Immature, mature. Inexperienced, experienced. People who are sophisticated also. Many people wonder if Charles can manage the company at his callow age of 26. At his innocent or inexperienced or immature age of 26. Let us see the next one. Confounded. Confounded is used for emphasis uh, especially to express anger and annoyance. This actually has another definition. This is rare to be used. Let us see the other expression which is actually used. Things which cause confusion or things which surprise you. Confounded means things causing confusion or even surprise. Okay. Now let us see the uh, synonyms. Amazed. When you are surprised, you are amazed. No? Bewilder. Again, confusion. Bewilder means confusion. Perplex means confusion. This term is not uh, generally used. It is very less to use of this one. So uh, nowadays, this word is being used for confusion or surprise. So don't use this term. It's, it is right, but it is not uh, in used very much now. Clear up, enlighten and clarify. These are anonyms for confounded. I am guessing I confounded you the same way you do me. Next, consternation. 
consternation. Consternation is a feeling of anxiety or unexpected. When you uh, look at something which, which you are not expecting, such kind of thing is consternation. First uh, synonym, dismay. Dismay is upset. Such things can also upset you. When you uh, look at something which is unexpected, you may get upset. Distress. Anxiety. Distress is anxiety. You can even be anxious if you see unexpected things. Panic. You can also panic. Uh, there is very important word related to this. Hysteria. The word is hysteria. Hysteria is an uncontrollable excitement. Uncontrollable excitement. And this term is also used as a mental illness term in science. When a person is mentally ill, when a person is uncontrollably excited, that term is, that situation is called hysteria in medical science also. Security, confidence, happiness. These are antonym for consternation. The decision caused consternation by majority of voters. Next, decrepit. The pronunciation is decrepit. Decrepit is something which is totally ruined because of neglection. Uh, ruined or which is about to get destroyed because of neglection. There are a number of things which you don't care uh, in your house or e also. You have a number of things which you have and you don't care for it and it get destroyed and it get decrepit. You see? Broken down, rickety and creaky. Creaky is very old fashioned. Old fashioned. And because of being very old, it is now uh, just at the edge of breaking down. That is creaky. Opposite, solid, stable and strong. Things which are very solid. It is quite very uh, okay, stable and strong. She opened her eyes and looked around, not recognizing the decrepit factory. Yes? Next, derelict. Derelict is synonym to decrepit, almost similar. It is also in a very poor condition because of negligence. But derelict can be used for property also and can be used for human beings also. Derelict generally is used for property or real estate. A very poor condition as a result of disguise and neglect, like most of the oldies uh, are senior citizens are. I don't want to like, okay, fine, let it be. Synonym, broken down, rickety, creaky, same synonym we did in the last word, decrepit. Opposite, solid, stable and strong. She opened her eyes, instead of decrepit, you can use a de uh, derelict. See, both are synonymous to each other. Both are synonymous to each other. Next, despondent. Despondent is lacking hope or uh, low in spirit. In low spirit or lose of hope of or courage. When someone loses courage or loses hope, it is uh, despondent. What are synonyms? Discouraged, hopeless, depressed. Don't need to explain easy words. Antonym, joyful, hopeful or cheerful. They all stood desperate and silent. They all stood with lack of uh, uh, hope and courage. Next, discomfiture. Now, this is very easy to remember. You can remember by comfort. Comfort is something which is uh, very good for, to you. Discomfort is not a good situation or not a, a easy condition for you. Embarrassment. So discomfort, discomfiture. Remember it like this. A feeling of unease or embarrassment or awkwardness. It is discomfort. See there? 
unease or shame. So opposite will be comfort, delight or happiness. She looked up quickly, momentarily forgetting her discomfiture. Next, dispirited. Oh, wow. This picture reminds me of 2003 World Cup. You remember 2003 World Cup? India and Australia were in the finals. Uh, India won almost every match except the first match it lose with Australia and it came to final. It even uh, won match uh, against Pakistan also. So every, every match it won but in the finals then. What was the score there? Uh, in the final like uh, Australia was somewhere, Australia was somewhere, uh, I remember uh, 350 or some, somewhere around this much for only two wickets. And India, India, Saurabh Ganguly elected to uh, bat afterwards and field first. So India was uh, 230 or 34 around somewhere, all out, on, only in 40 overs. At that time we were in, uh, I was like, at that time we had a board exams and I was uh, studying for the whole day that uh, in the evening I have to see the match, I have to see the match. And in the match, oh God, it was such horrible match, I can't even forget now. Such were our conditions. Even horrible, even I was crying like at the end, what happened? How can uh, our players do like this? I think. Anyways, dispirited. Dispirited, having lost enthusiasm and hope, disheartened. This is what we say, despondent also you can say, it is similar to despondent, no? Spiritless, down, gull. Gull is sadness or sad. Glum, oh, sorry, glum is, glum is sad. Opposite, enthused or decent or elated. Elated is joyous. Elated, joyous. In a very joyful condition. She was determined to appear unworried in front of her dispirited family. In uh, front of her, we all do this, no? Before family, we say, ah, everything is okay and all in that. Next, dormancy. Dormancy is a state of suspension where thing which is uh, not in use, thing which is not uh, active anymore. So let us see. In uh, science, it means a period of no growth of deciduous hardy plants. They lose their leaves, they shed their leaves, and the herbaceous plants they get buried into the earth. It is it is the sentence. This explanation is used with the very poetic language and uh, all that. Don't need to go through it. Just just remember, it is something a stage where something is suspended, where there is uh, inactivation in the situation, inaction inactive suspension so what will be opposite renewal action resumption okay resumption is again restored we did this word restore a fighting force that could be uh, rescued instantly from dormancy to action next a caustic it is a joyous feeling, it is a good feeling, a very excited feeling, you see. Feeling or expressing overwhelming happiness or joyful excitement. The synonyms joyful, jubilant. Jubilant is trippant. Trippant, very cheerful or joyful, delighted. These are synonyms, so opposite will be sane or sorrowful or sad. Maria's level of happiness rose to ecstatic when he was around. Next, envy. The pronunciation is envy, not ennui. You will be silent, he will be pronounced as envy. Again, this child is like, uh, look as lost, boring. So it is opposite of ascetic. You see, we did the last word, it is opposite to it. And V is a, a feeling of bore, where you lack hope, where you lack energy. A feeling of listlessness and dissatisfaction arising from lack of occupation or excitement. 
in the end we can use it for any situation where you lack energy or lack excitement. It is boredom, unease, languor. Languor is lethargy. Lethargy, lack of energy, lack of enthusiasm. Okay? Opposite energy, liveliness, excitement. An old fashioned man who would have lost his sense of or died of envy, envy before this. Next, ignoble. Ignoble is something which is not praiseworthy, which is insulting or which is not uh, accepted, which is not honorable actually. Not honorable in character or purpose. So synonym, shameful, unworthy or mean. Opposite, noble, worthy, reputable. Reputable is reputing, reputed thing. The serial killer was buried in an ignoble grave in the back of the cemetery. He was buried in an honorable thing. Next, imbroglio. It is like this thing, you can't, if I ask you to open this knot, you won't be able to, you will get very much confused, perplexed, because this situation is very complex situation, very confusing situation. That is what imbroglio is. It is confusing, complicated or embarrassing also. Such thing embarrass or annoy also. So, it is difficult, complication, trouble. Opposite will be simplicity. Simplicity, peacemaking and ease. Let us see example. The curious imbroglio devised a deceived royalist and republicans alike. Let us see the next one. Inchoate. Inchoate is something which is just started and something which is not completed yet. Just begin and not so fully formed or developed, rudimentary. So it is imperfect, it is shapeless or formless because it has not been completed yet. It is just started. So what will be opposite? Mature, grown or developed. Next one, indolence. Well, oh God. Such a slug person. Uh, indolence means, you can see this picture, a person who doesn't want to work at all, extremely lazy, extremely, uh, there's a very good word for this, apathy. The word is apathy. Apathy means lack of enthusiasm. It is synonym to sloth. Apathy and sloth are same. Lack of enthusiasm, lack of energy. So synonym is idleness or inaction. Opposite, industry. Industry means industrious, a laborious person. Industrious, we say such person. This is why we say industry, where a lot of work is done. A thing which is a very hard working, that is industry. Energy or ambition. My failure is probably due to my own indolence. I hope you are noting down the other important words which I am associating with these uh, words. Na? Very useful and very important. Next is infallible. infallible. Now I will give a very easy way to remember. Fall means things which can be destroyed or things which can uh, crumble down. Infall, infall means things which don't fall. See, things which can't make mistake, incapable of making mistakes or being wrong. So remember it like this, things which can fall, fallible, which don't fall, which can't make mistake, infallible. So just without making mistakes, so such, we say error free or uncanny. Uncanny is a very important word, it is something which is mysterious. Things which are mysterious or unnatural. Why unnatural and mysterious? Because infallible for human beings, we don't say human beings can't make mistake. Human beings are always, let it be any anyone, the person does mistake somewhere or other. So if we say that somebody who is infallible, who can't make mistake, for us the person is unnatural. 
for us the person is mysterious because such persons don't exist in our nature. Only God we consider can't make mistake. No? So such persons are mysterious or unnatural. That is why we are using uncanny here as synonym of infallible. True can be opposite. Faulty, fallible. This is what I was saying. Infallible cannot fall. Fallible which can fall, which can make mistake. Imperfect, of course. The arrogant professor believed he was infallible, infallible on the subject of geology. Number of people they think they are. Next, languor. Languor is again tiredness, lacking energy, or uh, inactive, or especially when pleasurable. In a good situation, in a uh, suppose uh, it is raining outside and people are going to sleep. I mean, how can people do such a kind of thing? In a, such a pleasurable situation, in a, such a pleasurable environment, the person should uh, be active, no? And in that situation you feel inactive, tired, you are a languor. Lastitude. Lastitude is Totally exhausted. <coughs> Excuse me. Lastitude is person who is totally exhausted, who has uh, mentally or physically it can be, it doesn't matter. A person who is mentally or physically drained, tiredness, indolence. Indolence is inactiveness. Indolence, inactive. So opposite will be meanness, eagerness, or vigor. The spelling is mistake here. V I G O U R. U R. It is vigor. Vigor means strength, strong. Her whole, uh, her whole being was pervaded by a dreamy languor. Next, maladroit. Maladroit is person. Now, in, in this uh, picture, you can see this man uh, clicking photo at the riverside or banks, uh, river bank, and he crumbled down. I mean, people who are not experienced, who are not uh, efficient, you see, inefficient or inapt or clumsy. What is synonym? Inexpert, unhandy, or bumbling. Inexpert are also naive. This is very important word here. Naive. Naive, suppose uh, when you go to learn something, you are a naive. You don't know anything about that uh, particular. Suppose if I am going to learn uh, how to drive car, I am a naive person. I don't know. I am an inexpert person. But after completing the course, after learning it, I become a suave person. The pronunciation is suave. Suave. Suave is a skillful or an expert person. So these are two opposite words. An expert, knife, a beginner is also an inexpert person. So a beginner can also be called knife. An expert or a skillful person, suave person. So this is uh, these are two opposite antonyms to each other. Bumbling, bumbling is a confused situation. Or a confused person. You say, why are you bumbling? Means, why are you getting confused? Why are you chattering or uh, uh, uttering words without sense? Bumbling. Able, skillful, and tactful. Tactful is sensitive. Sensitive means you are in conscious. You are conscious and you understand what is happening. You are not inefficient. You are not uh, uh, maladroit. See, this is how the word goes. Do remember naive and suave. They're very important words these are. Next is misanthrope. This is very important word. There, uh, there is root anthrop. Anthropy means mankind. An anthropologist is a person who loves mankind. Misanthrope means opposite of it. 
who dislikes humankind, no? Dislikes mankind. Because you see, anthrop means mankind, miss means who uh, don't like it. So, misanthropist, what will be opposite? A very important word to this philanthropist. Phil, another root, means love. And anthrop means mankind. So, a person who loves mankind is a philanthropist. A person who hates mankind is misanthropist. Do remember this word like this? A person who dislikes humankind and avoids human society. Such a person is misanthrop. Such a person is a grump person. Grump is bad tempered. Bad tempered. See? Next is hermit. This is again very important one. Hermit is a person who avoids uh, luxury, who avoids like who gives up luxury and goes to some remote area like we in India we have number of sadhus and naga babas who uh, who throw up or who give up like uh, the luxury and they go to Himalayas and they uh, pray to God there no such kind of people they are called hermit persons a person who is hermit who leaves all the luxury and go to uh, pray and uh, in a remote area or in uh, or who stays alone like this. Such people are hermits. Such people are misanthropic. Hermit has another very important word with it. Spartan. I hope you might have seen the movie 300 where 300 uh, Spartan people they uh, leave all their luxuries and go to fight with the Greek people. No, This is why we call them Spartan. Spartan is lack of luxury. Hermit who gives up luxury, Spartan is again who is lack of luxury. Who are very strict, who don't at all accept luxury. They live in very hard situation, in a very tough situation to, uh, to punish themselves or like for religious purpose or anything. Such kind of people, they are hermit or Spartan. I hope both the words are clear to you. Next is cynic. Cynic is doubting. A cynical person is a doubting person who don't trust others. See, a skeptical person who don't believe in others. Such person are misanthrop. They don't like human beings. See, antonym, believer, philanthropist. This is I was talking about. Philanthrop, misanthrop, philanthrop. Humanitarian. Humanitarian, believing in humankind. Living in a crime-filled city will turn anyone into a nervous misanthrope. Next, pervasive. Pervasive is thing which is widely spread, like you have on our internet, it is widely spread all over the world. You can find it everywhere. It is prevalent. Pervasive, prevalent, omnipresent. Now this is important here. We have another root, omni. Omni means everywhere. See? So wherever you find this root, it means everywhere. Omnipresent means present everywhere. We consider God as omnipresent. We say God is present everywhere, so he is an om omnipresent. Another word, omnivorous. Omnivores are animals which eat uh, plants also, which eat animals also. So we can say animals which eat everything. That is why they are omnivores. Omnipotent. Omnipotent with all power, a person who has all powers and we consider God to be the most powerful, you know, who has all powers. So God can be considered omnipresent, omnipotent also. So remember this root. Next is widespread. This is synonym to pervasive. Opposite, scarce, limited, narrow, which is not fine easily, which is not common. Ageism is pervasive and Entrenched in our society. 
means it is spread all over in our society. Next, plentitude. This word you can remember by plenty. Easy to remember like this. Plentitude, something which is full, which is complete, which is covered everything. So it is plenty. The condition of being full or complete. Synonym, mass, mind, dulge. This, this should not be there. Don't use this word. Lack, little, inadequate. These are antonym to plentitude. They are little. It is in shortage. See? Unfortunately, the king was bent upon still further, emphasizing the plentitude of his power. Next one, precarious. Precarious is something which is a bit dangerous or which you don't know what will ha what can happen uh, ahead. Dependent on chance or uncertain. Synonym, unsure, unreliable, risky. Don't need to explain these words. Antonym, strong, safe and secure. He made a precarious living as a painter. Uncertain living. Next word is ubiquitous. Ubiquitous is again a synonym to pervasive. Pervasive, what we did? Pervasive is thing which is found everywhere. Similar is ubiquitous. Ubiquitous is thing where you, which is very common, which is present everywhere, omnipresent as we did. All over, universal or global. Opposite, rare, unique, limited. Quite easy, don't need to explain it. This is all, uh, this is all what we have to do in this session. All the words are being covered. I hope you remember this and also remember the other words which we have done through this. Okay, till then, take care, have a nice day.